Hey everyone, this is our last wine that I'm filming this video, these videos for, for lot number three, um, which is going to be released in September. And I can't wait to tell you about Mathiasen. Um, Steve Mathiasen and his wife are the proprietors of this particular bottling. This is their 2020 Rosé. Um, it's sold out at the winery as we speak, but I was able to get my hands on a few cases here in Nevada. Uh, such a lovely, um, such a lovely story. So Steve, um, he finished his um, philosophy major in 1994 in California and uh, after that decided to go to grad school for um, horticulture and he always thinks of himself as a farmer before a winemaker and he's really dedicated to the big picture um, from an agriculture standpoint and horticulture of course and he just um, fell in love with um, wine throughout the years he um, was brewing beer at home you know in his young adulthood um, switched over to making wine from grapes that he purchased from some um, vineyard work he was doing at the time in Mendocino and you know he um, eventually transitioned into full-time winemaking um, around 2003 and he's a celebrated winemaker um, as we know today He's part of the movement um, that Jean Bonnet wrote about called the New California. And essentially, it's a, it's a focus on some examples of contemporary winemakers that are going back to the older methodology um, of winemaking, the more traditional, but for California. And for, in a nutshell, you know, California, with a lot of its graduates from UC Davis, um, had had um, a reputation for, you know, having winemakers that were graduating from this really prestigious uh, school, UC Davis, but they were overly technical. And, um, you know, it's a little bit of going the other direction. And although, although Steve's, um, grad school was in horticulture, you know, I bring up that comparison because California does a lot of things well, but at some point in the recent history of winemaking, wine got really technical, um, at times overly technical, and Steve is the antithesis of that. It's, it's back to basics, um, you know, using really natural methods in the vineyard. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's in this bottle. So the blend um, here approximately is um, Syrah based, about 45%, 35% Grenache, and 15% Movedra and Cunois. Uh, small production, just shy of 2,000 cases, and I tell you what, delightful. Um, because it's a blend, uh, it has a lot of layers and a lot to tell you. This, this bottle has a lot to tell you for sure. So um, it falls in that lower, for domestic um, production, especially California, it's a little bit lower in alcohol, um, which, you know, um, is part of the selection process. It falls just about 11%. And um, on the nose, you get a lot of a lot of character so you get um, like the strawberries you get cherries you get a little bit of floral notes um, on the palate you still get you know just like a rosé sometimes doesn't have a lot of structure this has just like the right amount of structure it's really pretty but it has that structure that can hold up to like rabbit dishes or summer salads um, you know or just um, de of course delicious on its own I had a you know a little time to spend with Steve he makes other wines you know of course other than this rosé he makes a really lovely cab that one day I hope to feature um, in the the wine shop and you know he's most of all just a really delightful human being it it was only um, you know an hour-long lunch that I got to sit in at the time a couple years ago with my colleagues and I and it was in a portfolio that I used to represent and I don't really talk about that part of um, my professional past very much but you know I I think that uh, every now and then you meet winemakers and you know that they're talented I've had the wines before um, you know I could go on and on about about the um, 
quality of Steve's wines and his dedication. Um, but he's a really wonderful human being as well. And so um, I got to sit and have lunch with him at Mama Fuku um, at, in here in Las Vegas. And I just, you know, I already believed in what he did, but it made me believe in him more. So I can't be more excited to um, feature his wines in the Lot 3 um, release coming in September this year. I hope you all have um, a great evening or day or whatever time of day it is.